We've had some great RTS games over the years, but we've also had some real stinkers. So, I thought it would be fun to rank the worst real-time strategy sequels ever made. But not just that, I'm looking for the ones that really left a stain. The ones that killed their entire franchise. That's not to say that they won't be revived down the line, or maybe even have been revived already, but their rankings will reflect the significance of the sequel's consequences. This list was partially decided by you watching in a community poll that I took a couple of weeks back. But I did the rankings, so sound off in the comments if you disagree, and let me know how you would order them. The final ranking is based off a few things, such as the actual quality of the game, its fan perception, and, as mentioned, to what degree it derailed or completely killed its franchise. Right then, let's get into it. Starting off lightly with... Command & Conquer Generals 2. Now, I know we're beginning with a bit of a strange one here in the fact that Command & Conquer was well and truly dead when Generals 2 was around, so it couldn't really be killed again. And that Generals 2 actually never came out, you'll probably remember that. But hey, you guys mentioned it enough times that I just couldn't not include it. And I think the reasoning for that is that it looked like a revival. A one in a million chance of a return to form for the franchise. After Command & Conquer 4, a game that we will certainly be mentioning again today, all hope seemed lost for CNC, and Generals 2 was looking like its grand saviour. A talented development studio, impressive trailers and gameplay, and a seemingly high budget, left many fans, me included, hopeful. But it was not to be. After numerous developer swaps and a free-to-play reboot, EA cancelled the game late in 2013. Despite talking about an upcoming beta, hyping up the game with trailers and marketing, as well as discussing its appearances at upcoming gaming events. It's for that reason that General's Tomb is on this list. A flicker of life was seen in Command & Conquer, only to have it be snuffed out by a reportedly mismanaged title, rife with corporate nonsense and indecision. Command & Conquer proper wouldn't be heard from again until the remasters of the original game in 2020. Now, Total Annihilation Kingdoms. Another strange one here before we get into the real meat. Kingdoms was the sequel to the much beloved Total Annihilation, created by Chris Taylor who would of course go on to make Supreme Commander. Kingdoms didn't exactly flop, receiving okay review scores and performing acceptably commercially, but it did end up being the last game its developer Cave Dog would ever make, thanks to it clearly not hitting the mark that people were hoping for. Maybe it was due to the lack of innovation from Total Annihilation, with it being a complete lift and shift of the TA engine, or the fact that the fantasy setting was certainly an odd pivot from its predecessor. Regardless, it was a mid-game, as the kids say, with a mid-response that led to the closure of its developer and earned it the title of the last game in its series. I think that qualifies it for this list, don't you? Right, onto the real stuff then, Supreme Commander 2. Now, I recently made a video outlining my thoughts on this game in depth, so if you'd like to watch it, there's a link in the description right under that like button. If not though, then the too long didn't watch version is that, while I think Supreme Commander 2 is a perfectly serviceable game, even quite a good one, it is a terrible sequel to Supreme Commander. And it sounds like most of you guys agree, though there's still a lot who think it's not even good on its own. But I'll tell you the number of people who said it's better than the original, zero. Supreme Command 2 was a good game, let's be honest, but had some pretty bad optics on launch, and they've only slightly improved since then. And its effect on the series? Well, the fact that 99% of all the spiritual successes and community mods out there are based off the original game, plus there not being a Supreme Commander 3, well, that's pretty telling. Also, it kind of killed gas-powered games. Not directly, but it was certainly one of the first dominoes to fall. Warcraft 3 re -for Wait, what was, the, what was that? Oh, sorry, I think I just heard the collective sigh from everyone watching this when I spoke the cursed words. If there was any hope in a true sequel to Warcraft 3, Reforged utterly killed it with one of the most atrocious and scummy launches in modern memory. I don't think we'll ever be able to come back from this, and I doubt Activision Blizzard wants to risk taking another shot at it. Nor do I think many of us want them to. Warcraft 3 Reforged wasn't just a bad product, filled with broken promises and missing features, though it certainly had them both. 
It also retroactively killed Warcraft 3 by updating it to essentially be a retro skinned version of the new remake. So all versions of the game would include the new anti-consumer user agreements, the swath of absent features, and countless bugs and issues. It basically left anyone wanting to experience the classic Warcraft 3 with one option. Go the way of the seas and acquire it by other means. Or install it outside a battle net for those lucky enough to still own a disc copy. Terrible remaster, atrocious optics, and basically a death knell for the series, the only reason this isn't higher is that Warcraft 3 was still a great game at its core, and even they couldn't wipe that out completely. Plus, it's only a remaster, not a completely new title, and it's not like Warcraft was flourishing as an RTS before this. Still, bad vibes. Many bad vibes indeed. Ugh, Stronghold 3, oh man, what a disappointment. This is a real sad one too. It was positioned as a true sequel to the original Stronghold. This third entry was meant to bring the series back to its roots and show that Stronghold could not only just exist, but thrive as a 3D RTS. Unfortunately for us, however, it was about as far away from that as it could have been. It launched in an absolutely abysmal state, chock full of bugs and issues that earned it Metacritic scores that only a mother could love, and a Steam page that to this day sits at mostly negative. Just to read the reviews to get an idea of the perception on this one, people complaining about disappearing castles, a lack of content compared to earlier games, terrible performance, and just about every other issue that you could imagine. Stronghold 3 was a near irredeemable sequel, with about as bad as a fan perception as you could get. Its saving grace, however, was that despite its issues, the series did survive. And honestly, it's only improved since that fateful release in 2011. Dawn of War 3. Right, so this is going to be an interesting one, because it really puts stress upon my ranking system. Let me explain. In a vacuum, I don't think Dawn of War 3 is quite as bad of a game as people may lead you to believe. And I know, I know, that's like an illegal statement to make on YouTube, but hey, it's my channel and I'm here to voice my opinions, not regurgitate the rhetoric of others. Now, you may think Dawn of War 3 is the worst thing ever, which is your right, and a lot of people would agree with you. And it's because of that perception, and the fact that since its release five and a half years ago, we haven't heard a peep from the series, except for the fact that Relic were dropping Dawn of War 3 like a sack of rotten potatoes, that the game is really so far down this list. Yes, Dawn of War 3 is not like the original, or even like the sequel, which in of itself seems to hold a somewhat love it or hate it reputation. And perhaps it strays too far into the mobile world, and away from what fans of their previous games really wanted from a sequel to Dawn of War. But I don't know man, pushing all the nonsense aside, and looking at the game in a vacuum, I'm not sure it's the abomination that people have told me. Alright, look, for more in-depth thoughts on this, and trust me, I've got some, you'll just have to wait for my retrospective of the game coming out next month. But it's okay, you don't have to wait any time at all to start flaming me in the comments for my takes. So get to it, I'll see you down there. Wait, hold on. We're at Command & Conquer 4, now? But look at the video, this isn't even the last game! Yes my friends, don't worry, we'll get to that soon. For now though, perhaps the most recognised failure. It's easily the one that had the most suggestions in my community poll. What is there to say, really, about CNC4 that hasn't been said already? The backlash that this game received on launch, and continues to receive, is just immense. It was a complete betrayal of what Command & Conquer stood for. Made the way it was, for selfish, corporate reasons, it ended up torpedoing one of the most beloved RTS series of all time. The gameplay was a total departure from what people expected as it tried to shuffle itself into the burgeoning MOBA market, as it became a class-based and fast-paced multiplayer action game. And the single player campaign story was just bonkers and most people would now consider it to be not even canon within the CNC universe, with a common phrase calling Kane's Wrath the last Command & Conquer game ever made. Now in a vacuum, the gameplay itself isn't quite as bad as people might have you believe, but because of its unbelievable treachery to its franchise, the accompanying public perception, and the fact that it put Command & Conquer on ice for nearly a decade, earns it the spot of the second worst RTS sequel ever made. But there is one worse. One game that killed its franchise harder. One that had the gameplay, the perception, 
and the impact to earn it the number one spot on this list. Some of you will likely know the answer already, because yes, it is Empire Earth 3. To be honest, I got quite a surprise when I saw how many people answered with this as the worst sequel ever. Now, myself, I'm not super familiar with Empire Earth, having only played the first game like 20 years ago, but after looking into this one, I'm certainly keen to try it myself and see how much it fumbled the bag. Empire Earth 3 is the perfect, or maybe worst mix, of all three of our categories. The game itself, pretty terrible. It reviewed poorly, even from the big outlets, with user scores that were even worse. Even reading modern day reviews now on good old games, when opinions have usually been tempered by time, with people going a bit easier on it, are just terrible. With my favourite one here giving 2 out of 5 stars and calling it neither old nor good, questioning its validity to even be on the storefront. And in terms of being a franchise killer, this is about as bad as you can get. Even Command & Conquer is now starting to recover after CNC4, but Empire Earth? Nah no, man, that shit's done. Empire Earth 3 came out in 2007, and I'd put money on never hearing anything about it ever again. Bad game, terrible optics, and a definitive kill shot to its series. If there's a game that deserves this spot more than Empire Earth 3, I've, perhaps, thankfully, never heard of it. And that's the list. I hope you all enjoyed, and be honest, do you agree or not? If it's the latter, please let me know down below. I would genuinely love to hear your take. Please consider dropping a like and a sub to the channel if you'd like to support me. It does really help. And if you'd like to go further than that, then you can do so by joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. You'll join legends like Eero, Krizzy218, George Rain, Jack Walsh, Nutty Jawa, Overlord Jeebus, T Edits, Crispy Robo Chicken, David Debolyi, Dekayo, Wintendo, and Ludwig Pervitoni. Thanks very much, mate. You know I appreciate it. Thanks again very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.